Virgo, hello. This is your 2020 August general reading. Please keep in mind that time is fluid in tarot. There is no gender in tarot. Um, cross watchers, welcome. If this is not your story, do not try and make it fit. Take what resonates, leave the rest. If this does not resonate with you at all, check your other placements. This is for uh, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. So, I'm going to try not to move the table too much because it bumps the camera. I just spent like 45 OCD minutes setting everything up and I'm still not happy, but it's okay. We are going to go forward. So, Virgo, 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 Virgo. Okay. All right. Spirits, guides, angels, surround me in the white light of the Holy Spirit and your divine blessing and protection. Show me the cards I need to see for the higher good of all involved. Show me the cards I need to see for the higher good of all involved. Clear, concise, accurate messages for Virgo. Now, these are general readings again, so, you know, it can be a, any situation. I just read it as it comes through, okay? Um, also, please remember that we all have free will, and our decisions can affect outcomes, you know, those kinds of things. So, you know, if this doesn't pan out the way you thought it would. That's just the way it is sometimes. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. It's a hard thing with tarot because people think, you know, oh, it's my future. This is what's going to happen. Well, you know, this is just the energy around you right now. This is not necessarily uh, the end all be all. Okay. So anyway, sometimes I cuss. If you don't like it, hard left, but I hope you stay. All right. All right, guys, we're going to set these cards out. Ooh, devil energy. Bottom of the deck could be dealing with a Capricorn. Doesn't have to be. Let's set these cards out. Two of Cups. Ace of Pentacles. Nine of Wands. Five of Pentacles. Four of Cups, Seven of Swords, Seven of Pentacles, Queen of Wands, the Hierophant, and the Ten of Wands. So Let's see if I can just adjust this a little bit so everybody can see what we need to see. Again, I spent a lot of time messing with all this shit. Okay, we're just going to leave it because if I start messing with it and it starts falling off the table, I'm going to have to start all over because I'm OCD. So here we go. Okay, so we are also going to, I'm going to clarify all of this with another deck. Um, we've got, again, we have this, you know, this devil energy, the bottom of the deck. So let's just see how this goes. Oh my God, I got to stop messing with it. Okay. All right. So we start out here with the two of cups, the ace of pentacles, the nine of wands, and the five of pentacles. So the two of cups is um, soulmate energy. This could be um, a relationship reading. It could be just a partnership. Um, it's hard to say. Take it how it resonates. But typically, Two of Cups is very divinely guided soulmate energy. Now, soulmate does not have to mean a romantic partnership, okay? Anybody can be our soulmate. We have more than one in our lifetime. We have a lot. Soulmate energy is just a person that has traveled with you throughout more than one lifetimes, okay? That you have, you know, a, a contract, a bond with, okay? You agreed to go through this life together in some capacity, does not have to be romantic. It could be a parent, a sibling, a friend, uh, any family member. I, I mean, it can be anyone, okay? Anyone that we feel a very close connection to, okay? Right next to that is the Ace of Pentacles. So this is, you know, 
a, a shiny new beginning presented by spirit. This, you know, this ace will, if you plant it and nurture it, it will grow. This is an opportunity provided by spirit for a new beginning. Um, and that is earth energy. So it could be your finances, your, your, you know, your money, your career, your job, your home, whatever it is, there is some opportunity regarding this ace of pentacles. And it looks like, to me, you have kind of been through the ringer with that nine of wands. You're still standing, but whatever has happened, um, it's right next to this five of pentacles. So there's change coming, um, but it's uncomfortable. And right now, you just feel very um, abandoned, disillusioned, out in the cold. Um, the thing about this five of pentacles is you can't tell in this black and white deck, but in the regular tarot deck... Um, you know, these, these people are out in the cold, they're hungry, they're abandoned, they're distraught, you know, this guy's got one, one peg leg or whatever. But in the in the in the tarot deck, um, there is a warm, glowing light coming through this window where these five pinnacles are. And what that signifies is that yes, they're they're outside, they're cold, they're hungry, they're distraught, they feel abandoned, they feel alone, it's miserable, okay. But all they have to do is look up and see this opportunity for change. Because it's there. They can go inside the church. They can, you know, get their belly full of warm food. They can sit next to the fire. They can be comfortable and happy again and figure out what their next move is. But this is how change makes us feel. It kind of is, un it's uncomfortable. It pushes us out of our comfort zone. Okay. But that's, it's just necessary. So let's start clarifying, see what we get. We've got the two of cups up here. So let's start there. So Spirit, show me the cards I need to see to clarify the two of cups, please. Why is this here? How does this fit into the reading? Show me the cards I need to see, please. Temperance. There's some kind of patient energy needed. The temperance card is um, also a card of alchemy. Um, you know, alchemists used to turn base metals into gold, and it took a lot of balancing of um, opposite energies to do so. Um, in the, you know, in the regular tarot, you can see this temperance um, card has, uh, you know, water on one side and fire on the other. So it's kind of a, a tempering of that energy, a balance. It's also a healing energy, and it's also a patient energy. So whatever is going on, um, the universe is, you know, kind of creating this opportunity for balance, for healing. But there's also a sense of the universe is working behind the scenes to bring a situation to reality, okay? And again, it could be regarding um, a romantic re relationship, does not have to be. So let's get another card for the Two of Cups and the Temperance. Show me the cards I need to see to clarify the Two of Cups and the Temperance. Why is this here? Okay. So there's been a tower moment, something that really shook you up. Now, typically we will see tower moments right before we see new beginnings because the tower, um, you know, anything that's not built on a solid foundation kind of breaks apart and falls away so that you can rebuild um, bigger, better, stronger than before. Either way, it's a shakeup, okay? It's something that happened that that shook you up, but it was necessary because of this new beginning. So whatever is going on, whether this is a relationship that fell apart um, or a partnership that fell apart or, you know, whatever the situation is, the universe is working behind the scenes. This was supposed to happen. So be patient, be kind to yourself, um, let yourself process and heal because right next to this, we've got this shiny new beginning. So Spirit, why is the Ace of Pentacles here? Show me the cards I need to see for the Ace of Pentacles, please. The Empress. So the Empress is, um, well, for one, she's perpetually pregnant. Um, as soon as she gives birth, she's pregnant again. But that um, talks about her ability to create and nurture life. She's abundant, prosperous, beautiful. She's the divine feminine. So this is a big energy. This could be you. This could be someone in your life. This could be how someone sees you, how you see someone else. This could just be an abundant, prosperous new beginning um, that's coming in here that is divinely guided. So anytime we see, for me, anytime I see major arcana, I know that this is the universe, you know, kind of giving this energy momentum, giving this situation, a, a you know, a kind of a kick in the ass because 
You know, a lot of times we just don't take the opportunities that spirit gives us, so they have to step in. So this Empress energy is big energy. So why is this Ace of Pentacles and Empress here, spirit? Why are these here? Show me the cards I need to see. Why is this here? Because of some kind of conflict, competition. Um, this can also be um, like brainstorming, like people coming together and um, trying to figure out how to change something, how to create something. Because it's it's a five. Again, it's change. This could also be inner conflict, but there could have been some kind of conflict with other people or you were conflicted about something. But this is, again, it's a five. It's change. Okay. It's uncomfortable. There's all these people or all these, you know, all these issues, directions. You just don't know what in the hell to do right now, but that's okay. It's okay. Be patient. We've got the uh, nine of wands right next to it. So, you know, this is kind of my wounded warrior. This has been a long battle. You're still standing. You are not giving up. Okay. So let's clarify the nine of wands. Why is the nine of wands here? How does this fit? Show me the cards I need to see for the nine of wands. <laughs> Hierophant could be a relationship because the Hierophant is Taurus energy. That doesn't have to be a Taurus. Um, that is also very, um, talks about formal committed, um, when I say formal, I mean like formal education, formal, um, like the Hierophant is kind of the great teacher of life. He's, he's, he's very worldly. He's been a lot of places. He's seen a lot of things. He's learned all he can learn. And now he's passing that on. So that can represent like the church that can represent, um, a, a, a schooling, like a formal education, you know, where you go to this institution, this formal worldly place to be, uh, educated. It could be, I mean, this is really just any place that you go or any person that you go to, um, to seek advice, guidance, education, insight, because the Hierophant has learned everything. And now he's passing all of that on to others in a formal, like earthly way. This is in the 3d. Okay. In the real world, in real time. So why is the nine of wands and the Hierophant here? Show me the cards I need to see. The Knight of Pentacles. So there is, this is someone coming in very slowly or you going towards something very slowly, perhaps with that Ace of Pentacles. You know, you're ready to move forward. You don't know where you're going because you're not moving yet, but you are planning. You're being strategic. You're being, um, you're being, you know, grounded, down to earth, realistic. You know, you understand the, the risks and the rewards um, you've got your horse pointed in the right direction. You haven't started moving yet. The Knight of Pentacles is the slowest knight in the deck, but he always gets where he's going because, you know, slow and steady wins the race. He's always prepared. He has all the resources that he needs. He has never not made it to his destination. Okay. So we've got this thought, this idea, this new beginning, this shiny new penny, whatever it is. Um, and we know where we need to go. We're still a little stuck. Okay. So we may be seeking advice from someone, um, and we're kind of feeling like we're on our last leg with that nine of wands. This is a burden. It's heavy. It's been a long haul. But, um, you know, let's see what this five of pentacles is about. What is this five of pentacles here for, spirit? Show me the cards I need to see for the five of pentacles. Hermit. This is you, Virgo. This is Virgo energy. So, um, you know, before you go forward, you're you're taking this advice that you've gotten from the Hierophant, this education, information, whatever it is, and you're kind of going within now. The the higher or the sorry, the hermit um is really a very kind of closed off energy where you're, you know, going within, searching for answers. You're not necessarily looking um to the future real far because you know, this lantern that this hermit has is not going to light the way very far in front of him, but it's going to show him immediately where he needs to go. He's going to get some answers. He's going to figure out what he needs to do, but he's got to kind of go within, listen to, um, you know, take his advice that he's gotten into consideration and, and maybe even, you know, connect with spirit a little bit, kind of just shut everything else out, listen to what, you know, is within him and figure out where he needs to go. So give me another one for the five, <clears throat> sorry, the five of pentacles and the hermit. Show me the cards I need to see for the five of pentacles and the hermit. Well, here we have the emperor. 
So this, that, you know, now we've got the divine masculine and the divine feminine on board. Everyone has both of these qualities. So this could be you, okay? Um, utilizing both your masculine and feminine qualities to figure out what you need to do to move ahead, take control of the situation, kind of, you know, boss up and do what you need to do. Um, this could represent two people. It doesn't have to. Um, so in the middle here, we have this four of cups, which talks about a lot of times, um, it can be a, a missed opportunity. It can be something that you just didn't see. You didn't take, you know, you were focusing here and not paying attention to what was coming in, but you're very closed off again, like this hermit, you know, his arms and legs are crossed. He's got his knees tucked up under his arms. He's alone and he's just you know, feeling his emotions, thinking his thoughts. This is right next to the Seven of Swords. Now, the Seven of Swords can be, you know, deception, betrayal, trickery, theft. It can also be somebody who, you know, is getting out in the nick of time. And it's right next to the Seven of Pentacles. So we've got two sevens. You know, we had the fives up here. Now we've got sevens. So we're making progress. We are making progress. Um, so let's figure out what this four of cups is. Show me the cards I need to see to clarify the four of cups. What is this about? Why is this here? How does this fit? Four of cups. You may have walked away from a situation, a relationship, a partnership, a job, whatever, that was just not doing it for you anymore. Um, it's ran its course. You got everything you could get from it. You, you know, whatever it was, whatever the situation is, you have decided to walk away and you may still be thinking about that decision. You know, you may still be like, gosh, was this the right thing to do? What the hell am I doing with my life? Um, let's get another one for the four of cups and the eight of cups. Show me the cards I need to see for the four of cups and the eight of cups. And again, you're still very alone on this journey. You know, you're, you're very, um, you're just alone. I really honestly am not seeing a whole bunch of other people as of yet. I feel like this could be the ending of a partnership, but we're not really seeing a lot of that other person's energy. Um, we're really focusing on you, which is how I like my readings to go. So give me another one for the four of cups and the eight of cups, please. The nine of cups. So you're progressing. Okay. You have walked away to go towards some kind of wish fulfillment, something you want for yourself. Um, again, you're still by yourself. There's, there, you know, there's not a lot of other people in this situation. You are going after what's best for you. And that's always a good thing. So what do we have here with the seven of swords? Um, this could have been you escaping. This could have been the reason why you left. Maybe somebody was lying or cheating or stealing or just being, this doesn't always have to be a huge energy of betrayal. It can just be somebody that was, that was, you know, didn't have great intentions or was self-serving or selfish. Um, this could be you getting out in the nick of time, sneaking away, essentially. Maybe that's how, you know, you feel like you got out just in the nick of time. But let's clarify the Seven of Swords. Show me the cards I need to see for the Seven of Swords. The Hanged Man. This is you, again, um, looking at things from all angles, figuring out how to go forward, being still long enough to look at the situation, um, you know, listen to your intuition. If you look, he's got that, that halo, which is, you know, he's getting that download from spirit. He's listening to his intuition. He's taking everything in. He's taking, you know, every angle into account. So show me another one for the seven of swords and the hanged man. Show me the cards I need to see for the seven of swords and the hanged man. And this is, um, Pisces energy. So, you could be dealing with a Pisces. You could have Pisces placements in your chart. doesn't have to be. It's really more the energy of the card. You're seeing that I feel like you had to get out of this situation to go towards your happiness. I feel like you think, you, you know, you've, you've gotten out in the nick of time right before things really got shitty um, so that you could move towards something that's going to make you truly, truly happy. And I love that the, sen the sun is in the center of this read because it trumps all the other cards. It means that whatever's going on, you're going to get the sun energy out of it. Okay. You're going to find happiness, joy, healing, bliss, all, all of the things, you know, that whatever it is you want in life, it's coming. Okay. So keep in mind <clears throat> that while this is happening, um, things may not look like what you thought they would, you know, your hopes, dreams, manifestations, whatever may not look like what you thought they were going to look like, but the universe is stepping in 
and giving you exactly what you're supposed to get. Exactly, you know, what's exactly the right things. So always remember that, you know, we don't always get exactly what we want, but in the end, the universe knows exactly what we need and how to make it work. Okay. So now we've got this seven of pentacles. I feel like this is, you know, this is a patient energy, um, waiting for these seeds that you've planted to come to fruition, you know, wondering what the future is going to look like, um, kind of, it, it can also be, you know, growing your future. You know, you, you're planting these seeds of change. So let's clarify the seven of pentacles. Why is the seven of pentacles here? Show me the cards I need to see for the seven of pentacles. New beginning. Okay. You're thinking about this new beginning. You've been patient. Um, and I think that's going to be your reward for all of this patient alone energy that you've got. Now, the ace of cups typically talks about a new beginning in love. But it could just be a new emotional beginning that's going to bring you a lot of, you know, a, a lot of, of joy and happiness. And this could also be kind of your renewal of, of loving yourself, which is so, so, so important. We cannot be successful if we don't love ourselves. Because if we, if we don't, we can only love other people as much as we love ourselves. And other people can only love us as much as we love ourselves. So it's so important to um, really go within like it looks like you're doing, okay? And, and make sure that, you, that you're doing the right thing for you. And the rest of it will fall into place, okay? A lot of times people get stuck and say, well, I have to do this because of my family or because of my kids or because of my spouse or because of this or because of that. Well, you have to do what's right for you before you can do what's right for anybody else. If it's not right for you, you know, it's just, it's it's going to, you know, all the bad juju is just going to trickle down. So do what's right for you with good intentions and a pure heart. Renew that sense of self-love. Again, this could be an opportunity with a person in a relationship or a job that just brings you a lot of fulfillment and happiness. So let's clarify um, this Ace of Cups. Why is this here with the Seven of Pentacles? Why is this here? Going forward. This is about, twos are about um, choosing your direction, okay? Choosing, you know, choosing what you want to do. You have got the world in your hands. You know, you've got this full cup of love. You're ready to set out and start your future. Um, you know, you're pointed towards the horizon, ready to go forward. And enter the Queen of Wands. <laughs> the Queen of Wands is the warrior queen of the deck. She is passionate. She is strong. She is fierce. She is beautiful. Um, she goes after what she wants and she gets it every time, but she also has this staff of new beginnings. It's got this new growth on it. So, and you know, you've got, you're holding on to this, this staff also. So this could just be the energy that you're stepping into, um, standing in this power of ready to go forward and fight for what you want and get it. Sometimes the queen of wands can be a third party, but I'm not really feeling that. This could also be just a person that you're dealing with. This could be a choice in a relationship. Okay. Okay. You could be dealing with a fire sign, um, Aries, Leo, Sag. But the Queen of Wands, you know, that's, that's, uh, she's, I mean, just look at her. That's, that's, I mean, if I was going to be a queen, I would be the Queen of Wands. <laughs> okay, guys, let's see who this is. What do we got going on with the Queen of Wands? Why is this here? How does this fit into this reading? Show me the cards I need to see to clarify the Queen of Wands, please. Could be a third party. Could be somebody that broke your heart. Could be the cause for the trouble. Because whatever is going on in this situation, it, it hurts, okay? This this person laying under this, this broken heart with the three swords stabbed into it, um, that's painful energy. So let's clarify this. Queen of Wands and Three of Swords, what's this about? Ten of Wands. We have the Ten of Wands here. I feel like... This may have been what was burdening you. This Queen of Wands could have very well been the person you were involved with or dealing with in whatever capacity that didn't work. And you carried that around for a long time. She really broke your heart or he could be a man, doesn't matter. But it looks like right now you just are ready to put that down. You're ready to be done with it. Okay. And we're back to the Hierophant. So this could be, um, you know, ending that formal commitment of, of marriage or that relationship or that partnership, business or otherwise, whatever it is. So let's let's see what's up with this this hierophant. What's up with this hierophant? King of Cups. 
Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. The King of Cups has a lot of love, doesn't always talk about it, doesn't always, he, he is emotionally available, but he's not always great at expressing how he feels, which could be the reason this was, you know, so long to get out of because, you know, you maybe you really cared about this person, this, you know, whoever this energy of this Queen of Wands is. But, you know, in this deck, he looks a little defeated, looks a little sad. Okay. He's still holding on to that cup, but he's pretty close to, to laying it down. So let's clarify the Hierophant and the King of Cups, please. Why is the King of Cups and Hierophant here? How does this fit into the reading? Yeah. Okay. So that person you feel like was your soulmate, it was hard to let them go. You had a lot of love for them, but I feel like you had to let them go. And, you know, you also had to do, you know, you had to do this because um, it was the right thing to do. I think it took you a long time. I think you were very conflicted about how to go forward. You've known for a while how, you know, that you needed to, but you've just kind of been in a very still contemplating energy. So now we've got this 10 of wands. And again, this could be a romantic relationship, a family situation, a business partnership, anything where you were coming together with another person um, that, you know, caused you some pain, some strife. Okay. Now we've got this 10 of wands again, 10 of wands, 10 of wands. You are laying this burden down. You're done. Okay. So show me the cards I need to see for this 10 of wands down here at the bottom of the reading. Knight of wands. You are ready to move forward, go towards, you know, what you feel passionate about. Sometimes the knight of wands can be um, a player. Maybe you're ready to play the field. I don't know. Do you boo? Do you? Um, but this is, uh, you know, charging out again with that, 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 you know, wand with the new growth on it, going towards something or away from something, whatever the case is. <laughs> and this is the queen of cups. Maybe you got out of this situation with the queen of wands and are finding a relationship with the queen of cups. Maybe this is what you're going towards. Um, this could be a, another person, of course, obviously, water sign, doesn't have to be. But, um, you know, water energy is also very healing. So I feel like whatever is going on here, um, you're heading in the right direction. I don't feel like, I'm hoping that you are totally clear of this other energy, because I feel like that's kind of a, yeah, okay. So you're seeing the truth, you're speaking your truth, you're getting the truth, you're hearing the truth. Um, this is about, you know, being, you know, kind of that light bulb epiphany moment. So maybe you're kind of realizing that for the better of, of you and all involved, you've got to go forward. You've got to speak your truth. You know, people need to hear your truth, that kind of thing. You've got to see the situation um, through the eyes of truth, whatever is going on. This is, you know, kind of an opportunity from spirit for you to um, have that realization, that epiphany that you need to move you forward and be successful. Um, so let's see what we've got here for the bottom of the deck. We've got this devil energy. Well, I feel like, you know, this could have been somebody that you were, that you were, um, you know, that you felt stuck to, you know, you kind of felt bonded or chained to this person. Um, and you were right, you know, you wanted to move forward, but you were stuck. So you knew you had to cut ties with this person. Um, it didn't necessarily make you happy. It was painful. Again, it was it was a big change. It's a five. But you had to end it. Okay, you had to end it um, to be to be single to be alone. Um, because again, you felt trapped, stuck. You didn't know which, which way to go in this relationship. You had to make a choice, stressed you out, stressed you out. But here you are, you know, riding, riding forward, riding forward with, you know, being victorious, being balanced. Okay. Um, bringing balance back into your life, back into your situation, back into, um, you know, bringing yourself back into balance after this time of this heartbreak, this, this pain. Okay. So now you're, you know, now you can kind of celebrate and be happy. You've had this release. Um, you know, you're stepping into this power of the Empress, you know, you're ready to go forward <coughs> either with, um, you know, a message of love or just self love, or you're ready to just get back out there again. You've kind of made your wishes. You've been healed. You've gotten this clarity. Okay. So here, here's, you know, this is where we come full circle. You've gotten the clarity you need, and now you have an opportunity for success to move forward. Okay. So 
I also am going to pull you guys a, I got these, these new cards. They're little um, messages from the mermaids. Who doesn't want a message from the mermaids? So I'm going to just pull a card just for some advice, just for, you know, a warm, fuzzy little message. Um, and because I think these cards are so cute. And who doesn't love mermaids? I mean, come on. Who doesn't love mermaids? All right, guys. So this is just going to be a little, a little, a little message from a mermaid. Okay. This is it. Self-care. Drowning doesn't always require water. Yep. So whatever you were going through here, you know, you have to do what's in the best interest of you. You have to take care of yourself. You have to love yourself. You have to be able to lay down these burdens successfully to move forward. So don't forget to love yourself and take care of yourself. Um, that's a very important messages or message. So that is what I have for you, my Virgo. Um, I hope this resonates. Please um, like, share, and subscribe to my channel and hit me up in the comments. Let me know how this resonates for you. And I will see you next month. Love and light, guys.